Welcome back! Today on Dialed In DIY, I found a new way to help beat the heat that you can take with you just about anywhere you go. No hose required. I've been experimenting with some ways to dial in a previous project that I had in a video for cooling misters that you attach to a hose, but I wanted to make up one way that you could take along the road with you. And this particular one is portable. I have a proof of concept that I'm going to show you that I made before this build, but then I'll walk you through everything I need to do for this build, starting with a 2 liter bottle and these little brass hose barbs. You'll notice when I made the hole on the cap, I started making it from the inside. That's an important step because you'll see later why that probably is going to help you a little bit with making a good seal when there's pressure inside the bottle. As you can see on the inset picture, push the hose barbs all the way up until the ridge on the hose barb, right around the middle of it, is seated firmly against the top of the cap. Most of the tubing that I will be using in this project build is the quarter inch vinyl tubing that's used for drip irrigation systems. You can find it pretty inexpensive at most hardware stores. You could try to brute force push this hose onto the end of the hose barb, but I have found that just using a little bit of heat really helps it go on easily and gets you to seat it all the way to the end without a lot of extra force. As it cools, it's going to tighten very nicely right around that hose barb and create a really good seal. So now that we've got the hose that pulls the water from the inside of the bottle and the hose set up to go out of the bottle, we just need the misting nozzle so that we can spray it. And I'm using the exact same misting nozzles that I used in the prior project. There are actually other nozzles that are made that work under less pressure and might actually be better for a build like this. The last key step in this process is simply connecting a pump to the bottle to create the pressure to push the water out. I'm using clear vinyl tubing in much the same technique as I did for the other tubes to connect this pump, which I actually got at a dollar store. It was really cheap, which is great, but I lost the hose that was connected to it, so I had to do a little extra work to connect this vinyl tubing so that I could make it work. On this end of the vinyl tubing, I'm using a little extra heat to start getting to the point where I'm melting the tubing so that when I push it around the hose barb, I'm not going to be going for a solid fit at the outset. I'm just trying to make it fit the shape so that we can get a good seal once we do have it tightened down. And the way to tighten it is with zip ties. We're going to use zip ties and a little bit of heat around the body of the tubing again just to soften the tubing and the zip ties will then help it to hold securely around the hose barb so that we don't have air leaks. Before I started this build, I knew it was going to work for a one-person cooling misting system because I had actually taken the time to build a kind of proof-of-concept test model with a much smaller bottle and a very crude, rudimentary kind of a setup, and it worked great. So I decided to scale it up to a bigger bottle that would hold more water and hopefully be more effective over a longer period of time. One word of caution, the misting nozzle won't let the air come out very quickly, so it's going to hold pressure for a little while, so you need to be careful when you first open it back up so that you can let that pressure out slowly and not pop the end off the bottle. There's a simple way to give you control when you want the water on and off, and that is to add one of these little on-off valves that you can find in the same place at the store where you bought the tubing. Before you actually run water through the entire system, you want to reduce the risk of actually clogging up the nozzle. So go ahead and take that back off and fill up your bottle about two thirds of the way full. And then we're just going to flush it through to get rid of any little extra debris or pieces of junk that might clog up the nozzle. And then our build will be done.
Now that I'm satisfied that the tubing and everything else is cleaned out, I'm going to go ahead and put the nozzle back on the tube and try it out for its misting effect. In the previous hose attached version, the mist came out with a lot of force and was much easier to see. And because we're trying to cover a bigger area and cool down more people, that's exactly what you need. But in this build, the mist is coming out, it's a little harder to see, but it's exactly the amount of mist that I would want just for cooling myself if I'm going on a hike, sitting outside, relaxing by the pool, or whatever else I might want to be doing. But just because it works for the purpose I wanted doesn't mean I'm done tinkering or thinking of ways to improve on this. I started off by actually testing a garden misting nozzle. It works, but man, it sprays a lot of water. So there might be some fun uses for this, but not as a little personal misting device that you want without getting your clothes soaking wet. So you can see a regular misting nozzle will actually put out enough moisture to help cool you down a little bit without actually getting your clothes soaking wet. So there are actually a lot of good possible uses for a project like this and I plan to test a bunch of them. While making this project, I actually came up with some new dialed in ways to make other versions of this project. But in addition to that, I thought of several ways I could improve on this design alone. And I think I'm gonna try several of these as well. Hey, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to stop by Dialed In DIY to check out my new project for getting a little bit of cooling relief on a hot day. Please click that thumbs up to let me know if you liked it or got something out of the video and hit that subscribe button and click the bell while you're here so that you can get notifications for future Dialed In DIY projects. And as always, please feel free to share your comments below and then come on back in the future because there will be plenty more Dialed In DIY to come.